don't get it. Chloe is the meanest person I've ever known. Come on. There are much worse people in Paris right now than Chloe Bourgeois. I'm sure people like Chloe are capable of great things. Miraculous Ladybug is a cataclysmic TV show with laughable animation, messy plot, and filled with funny and wacky characters. The characters are, in my opinion, the best and most memorable aspect of the show. They're actually the entire reason why I got invested in the show. Because despite the characters, everything else in this show is awful in my opinion. If it wasn't for them, I would have completely ignored this show 100%. So, thank god for the characters. And also, the soundtrack's awesome. Who are the most memorable characters of the show? Well, for me, it's Adrian, Sailor Moon, Moana, Michelangelo, Bruce Wayne, Alfred, Haley Williams, Rosita, Ayanami Ray, Dora the Explorer, Xenomorph, the Zombie Skull Crusher, Miles Morales, Beast Boy, Tornado, Peter Parker, Harry Osborn, Cuatro Ojos, and Chloe. And if I were to choose who is the best character in the whole show, it's definitely Chloe. Chloe Bourgeois is, in my opinion, the absolute best Miraculous Ladybug character, aside from Adrian. I already made a whole video about her, explaining why she is such a complete waste of potential. But now in this video, I'm going to defend my favorite Ladybug character. I would like to make a response to the haters of Chloe. No, I'm not going to force you to change your opinions. If you guys hate Chloe, then I respect that 100%. I just want to make some statements and hope that you'll understand. Because I really do believe that Chloe is an underrated, overhated, and misunderstood character who deserves justice. Four very important words. Stop blaming the victim. Okay, let's get started. Chloe is a selfish, absorbent, narcissistic bully in Kaylin's class. She's the one who bullies Marinette at school, she's the one who bullies Ali at school, she's the one who bullies Rose at school, she's the one who bullies... well, basically everyone at school. But not Adrian. We'll get to Adrian later. From there, the viewers and the fans started hating Chloe. I gotta admit, I used to be one of them. I mean, who wouldn't hate a character like her? So annoying. But honestly, after watching a lot of episodes of her and the rest of the characters, she eventually became my favorite. Chloe, compared to the rest of the Ladybug cast, is the most interesting. She has everything a three-dimensional character must have. She's developed, fleshed out, explored, and really complex. And not to mention, she's really impactful to the main plot of Miraculous Ladybug. Love her or hate her, but Chloe Bourgeois is in fact a better written character than most Ladybug characters. To be honest, while ignoring the fact that she has good writing, I still don't hate Chloe. Yes, she does a lot of mean things to a lot of people, but at least there's a reason behind them. And giving a villain a tragic backstory and or a reason behind their wrongdoings will make the audience sympathize with them. And for me, it totally worked. Chloe is a girl who had a very difficult upbringing. Just look at this image right here. That really says a lot about her relationship with her mother. Her mom is just so terrible. It's really impossible to find qualified staff these days. You're fired! <laughs> Her father, the mayor of Paris, is also terrible. Yes, I know, he gives Chloe everything she wants, but that's bad. This is what you call bad parenting. He spoils his daughter to death, basically giving her everything she wants, instead of giving her the thing that every single kid needs in this world. Discipline. And that's the problem with Chloe. She lacks discipline, she lacks love and attention, she lacks good parents. She basically has a mother who was never there for her, and a father who was there for her way too much. And I think that's the real reason why Chloe bullies her schoolmates. She just wants to feel better about herself because unlike Marinette, Alia, Nino, and the rest of them, Chloe has a terrible life with terrible parents who never gave her the things that every single child needs in their life. Discipline, love, attention, good morals taught from parents. Because sometimes the only way you can feel good about yourself is by making someone else look bad. And I'm tired of making other people feel good about themselves. <sighs> Does having a terrible life excuses her wrongdoings? Personally, I think the answer is yes. She's just a child, dude. A child who had a terrible upbringing. A child who hasn't fully grown up yet. A child who has the potential to change and grow up if she's given a chance by the narrative. Let's take a look at this spare bear. I know a lot of fans thought that Chloe was being a total asswipe in this scene because she was about to ruin this beautiful dance and she completely ruined this guy's life by firing him. Dude, stop blaming the victim. Do you guys even know what was going on in this situation? John, whatever his name is, was blackmailing Chloe by using Mr. Cuddly. You are fired! Now get out! 
I don't blame you, Chloe. You were literally being blackmailed by your own butler. Yes, I know he was just trying to help Chloe, but you could have at least thought of something else to make her nice, instead of thinking of blackmailing her, goddammit. Now let's talk about Sabrina. We all know her as Chloe's only friend in school, but she doesn't even know that Chloe's just using her. I really don't know how they became friends, because I still don't know the backstory. But I think what really happened was this. Hey, wanna be my friend? I don't know. Maybe. Did you know that my dad is the mayor? We're friends now. I think they became friends because Chloe is not that good at making friends, so she just uses her father's name to get friends. Or maybe because Sabrina was born to be a servant or whatever. Again, I still don't know the backstory. I still don't know how they became friends. So I don't know if I should hate this or not. Well, so far I'm liking it because their friendship is actually improving. Hopefully, it will improve even more. Hopefully. Now let's get back to Adrian. You wanna know the real reason why she loves him so much? No, it's not because he's hot. No, it's not because he plays piano. And no, it's not because he's a famous model and she wants to be his girlfriend just for the sake of being popular. It's none of those things. Chloe loves Adrian because he is somehow the one and only person who sees the real goodness inside her. She's happy every time Adrian's around because she sees him as the guardian angel she needs right now. That's why she loves Adrian. Adrian is Chloe's guardian angel. Adrian is Chloe's escape. Adrian is Chloe's reason to live. I think that's why she behaves like that in Reflecta. She desperately wanted to be next to Adrian in the class photo because she just loves him that much. Unpopular opinion, I feel like her love for Adrian is more believable than Marinette's love for Adrian. Another unpopular opinion, after getting to know Chloe even more, I can now understand why she would use her father's name to get away with everything. I'm not sure that my father would share your point of view. How dare you put me behind the rest? Do you know who my father is? <gasps> what? I'm not so sure my father will react kindly to me being punished without any proof. Well, your stupid little movie won't make it into the festival if I'm not in it because my daddy is one of the judges. What? You're gonna hear from daddykins! Like I said earlier, her father basically spoils her to death, and thanks to that, she sees him as a tool, but she never sees him as her father, because she was just raised so terribly. Again, stop blaming the victim. And that is why Chloe is my favorite character of Miraculous Ladybug. She's the most interesting, the most developed, the most explored, the most complex, has the most personality, and has the most character depth. Unlike a lot of these guys. Is that ironic? I don't know, man, it's up to you. Many people think that the real reason why she was so desperate to become Queen Bee is because she just wanted to be famous. And they're not wrong. She really wants to be famous. But I think there's more to it. I think the real reason why she wants to be famous is because she just wants people to like her. Because she knows that nobody likes her. She believes that being a superhero that saves people from danger will make a lot of people like her. And plus, being a superhero has always been her dream. I just wish that she would grow up and move on from that. But sadly, the narrative won't allow that. A lot of people, even the creator himself, absolutely hated Chloe and Queen Wasp and thought that she was a terrible Queen Bee. And they're not wrong. She revealed her secret identity to the public eye, she goofed off with her powers, and she nearly killed a lot of train passengers. I can totally understand why a lot of people thought that she was so terrible in here. But do you guys ever bother to stop and ask yourselves? Can you blame her? I for one, most definitely don't blame her. Don't get me wrong, she did an absolutely terrible thing. But I can actually understand why she would do such a thing like that. She's just a kid, dude. A kid who had absolutely no idea about being a Miraculous Holder. Nobody told her the strict rules. Nobody told her that it's such a gigantic TITAN risk to be a Miraculous Holder. She had absolutely no knowledge of being a superhero. But she did it anyways because all she ever wanted to do was to make her mother notice her. She never intended to kill those people on purpose. She never intended to do something terrible. She just wanted her mom to love her. Why don't you love me, mom? If you did not cry or at least felt sad for her when she said that, then that either means two things. You're a heartless bastard, or you just don't care about Chloe at all. Anyway, my point is I will give her a pass on having a freakout session because she's just a 15-year-old child who had no knowledge of being a Miraculous Holder, who had no knowledge of being a superhero, 
and who's been emotionally abused by her mother. Again, emotionally abused by her mother. And also, you mustn't forget about the fact that Chloe actually did the right thing in the end. She returned the Bee Miraculous, and she said sorry. Truly heroic and truly realistic of Chloe. Bottom line, I agree. Chloe was terrible as Queen Bee in this episode. But I can't blame her, and I can't hate her for that. Because I understand her. I understand why she did that. I understand the pain that she's trying to suppress. Like I said, stop blaming the victim. What happened? It was my fault, Sensei. Chloe. I was just trying to impress my mother because she doesn't love me. And, well, I'm sorry, Sensei. You almost killed people. I didn't mean it. She's only a child. That's no excuse. You guys can't keep defending her. But she'll learn. She will never learn. She can't learn to be a superhero. Because you never give her a chance. Give her a chance? Guys look at her. She is a redeemable. Sensei. Chloe. Sigh. As I said earlier, I already made a whole video about this topic, but I want to further elaborate on that. In Season 3, Chloe's development got completely abandoned. She just did a complete 180 and transformed back to being a two-dimensional bully, just like in Season 1. She's not realistic anymore, she's not empathetic, relatable, and likable. Everyone started hating her again just like in Season 1. A lot of fans, even the creator himself, couldn't stop saying that she is irredeemable. They couldn't stop saying that she has always been bad and she can never change. Okay, sure, she's irredeemable, she can never change, and she has always been bad, she has always been this way. Okay, I get it. I mean, it's not like there were any evidence of her being a good person. Oh, wait! <sighs> Again, stop blaming the victim. Because not only is Chloe a victim to difficult upbringing, but she is also a victim to... Uh, f fictional character abuse? I guess that can be a thing now, because the creator of this show really has a serious vendetta against his own fictional 15-year-old character. I really don't know why. Maybe because Chloe is based on a real-life human being that the creator hates so much? Or maybe it's because the creator has a thing against blondes. A little fun fact, Chloe is not the only wasted character in the show. Adrian is also wasted. And he's blonde too! So... I really do think that the creator has a thing against blondes. I don't freaking know. I honestly think that giving Chloe development and completely retconning it in the following season always felt like something a clown would do. They started her out as an unlikable two-dimensional character. Then they gave her development. And then they decided to completely abandon Chloe, just like what her mom did to her. And give a big middle finger to the fans who loved Chloe and say, What's that? You thought Chloe is redeemable? You thought Chloe is actually capable of being nice? You thought Chloe is actually capable of changing? Go fuck yourself! Is this supposed to be a joke? If it is, then it's not funny. If anything, it's insulting. This felt like an insult. I feel like I want to punch someone in the face right now because I just felt so embarrassed. Embarrassed about the fact that I thought Chloe is actually capable of changing. It's like this show treats me like I'm a fucking idiot. A little fun fact, they never wanted Chloe to have a redemption arc in the first place. They actually wanted to portray her as an irredeemable character since the beginning. This is according to my research. You know, if the whole idea was to portray Chloe as a completely irredeemable human being without fully committing to that idea in a consistent, believable way, just to teach little kids an extremely, unforgivably wrong lesson that says people can never change, then I really only have one thing left to say about Chloe's downfall. In Miraculous Ladybug Season 1, I hate Chloe. In Miraculous Ladybug Season 2, I love Chloe. In Miraculous Ladybug Season 3, I'd rather watch Caillou. Now, I am very well aware that there are some or maybe a lot of fans that are saying that she is even worse than Hawk Moth. Yes, you heard that right. There are people who actually say that the things that she does are even worse than Hawk Moth's doings. That girl is worse than Hawk Moth! At least half the city has gotten akumatized because of her! 
I still don't know if that's entirely true. But if you really think that Chloe is worse than Hawk Moth in your opinion, then I don't know what the hell to say to you. You really think that bullying is worse than child abuse? Do you really think that way? Gabriel is most definitely worse than Chloe. Look at Cat Blanc. In that episode, when he found out that his one and only son is his enemy after all, he didn't feel devastated. He didn't even feel sad. Oh my god, my own son is my enemy after all. What am I doing with my life? I'm just wasting it by standing in my lair every day without giving my one and only son the love and attention that he needs from his father. I should stop this and start spending time with my son because despite the fact that I lost my wife, I still haven't lost everything. That would have been so realistic and so dramatic for Gabriel. But instead, he was actually very excited. Excited for what? Excited to abuse your own son so you can bring your wife back to life? Jesus Christ! He doesn't even feel any guilt! Why not? Why wouldn't you feel any guilt from the fact that you're literally fighting your own son? Again, you're literally fighting your own son! He would even take advantage of Adrian just so he could bring his wife back to life. It's like he doesn't even care if Adrian gets hurt or killed. It's like he doesn't even care about his son at all. That got me thinking. Did Gabriel even want to have a child with Emily in the first place? I want to know. My point is Gabriel does child abuse while Chloe just bullies her schoolmates. And people actually say that Chloe is worse than Hawk Moth? That is a lovely little scene you're setting. But I don't want you to get distracted, boy. But I just want Marinette to love me. And I want the miraculous. So get it, or else. Okay, I will, I will! Yes, she hurt her father's feelings in Maledictator, but at least she admits it. At least she admits that she did a terrible thing to her father. At least she actually cares for her family. At least she is able to realize that she is hated by everyone. At least she is realistic and believable in my opinion. Unlike this guy. And I might be saying, oh you just don't get it do you Cyrus, he does these things for a good cause, bringing his wife back to life. I'm not even kidding what I say that that's still too far for me. Chloe bullies kids at school because like I said earlier, she just wanted to feel better about herself. Because unlike everyone in this school, she doesn't have a loving family. She doesn't have a good life. It's not her fault, okay? Chloe just doesn't like birthdays. She never remembers them, just like her mom. Uh, yeah, well, you don't have to tell him my life story, either. At least the reason why... <gasps> Shut up! At least the reason why she does bad things is understandable and realistic, in my opinion. This one is not. Yet. So tell me, do you really think that Chloe is even worse than Hawk Moth? I don't. In conclusion, I think Chloe Bouchois is the most misunderstood character in the history of Miraculous Ladybug. Misunderstood by the characters and the viewers. She deserves so much more. Yes, she does a lot of bad things, but she still deserves to be loved despite that. Because I believe that everyone in this world deserves love. Nobody is useless. Everyone is worth something. And Chloe Bouchois is most definitely worth something in this show. She's the one who made the show even more interesting. Thanks to her, I actually want to see more of this show. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully she won't be wasted even more. Especially after what happened in the season 3 finale. Just a reminder, just a friendly reminder, I still haven't watched any episode of season 4. But I will soon. I just, I'm so busy right now. I will watch season 4 soon. Please do not spoil. Chloe Bourgeois is a mean, selfish piece of garbage, but it's not her fault that she turned out like that. She's a girl who had the worst childhood, has the worst parents, has the worst life compared to her classmates. The biggest problem is that no one sees the pain she feels everywhere she goes. All she ever wanted was someone to notice her. All she ever needed was someone to care. That's why she loves Adrian. Because he is everything she ever wanted in her life. Someone who actually cares for her. I think the only way for her to be redeemed is if the writing team would reconsider. If only they will give her a chance, because everyone deserves it. If only they can see that she's incredible. Listen to this song called Beneath the Skin by Memphis May Fire, because it perfectly sums up Chloe. My name is Cyrus the Great, and I want justice for Chloe Bourgeois.